Oh, hello. Hello. What are we doing today? Uh, we're going to talk about, we, we've started watching Apothecary Diaries, so yes. we're going to kind of give a, like a first impression. We'll, we'll do a full review of, uh, of season one uh, later on, but we, we got into it, we got a little bit addicted, so we're, we're further in than I expected us we're to about, be right we're now. We're about halfway through. Yeah. I think we're on like episode, like, well, not quite half. We're about episode like 10, Yeah. and there's about like 24 episodes. Yeah. Well, it's funny, because normally when we do like a first look at something, it's like, it's we'll, like we'll watch the first episodes. three or four episodes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and we just like, we were watching, we're just like, let's watch another episode. Ooh, ooh, yeah. we, we still have, let's watch another episode. I mean, How about another one? We did like 10 basically in a day. Yeah. Like we just kept on watching. Yeah, no, I mean, The Apothecary Diaries, I didn't really know what to expect when we started watching it. I mean, it's one of these big new anime that came mm -hmm. out this year. Um, and it's fun to watch something that is not kind of what we're used to. Like we've seen a lot of, one of the things you said when we were watching the other day is like, you were so thankful it wasn't an isekai. Yeah, yeah, no, because because this kind of story, you know, I've I've read some some manhwa and some manga that that are this kind of story, but it's almost always uh, either an isekai mm -hmm. or the main female character is pretending to be a boy. Yes, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and so like yeah, I've I've read a few where the main female character is like pretending to be a eunuch and like oh, yeah, 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 and and. And so it's this this funny kind of thing where this is just a, a story with a very capable main female lead who by the end of the first episode all of her like like secrets are, are out in the open and and so like it's just her getting to be really capable and, and solving crimes. Mm, yeah. Yeah, solving crimes, exactly. I'm so surprised that you like you said that at the at the that's so okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> it's funny that how the way you describe things. You're like, and all of her secrets are revealed at the end of the first episode. Well, and, well, I mean, because they are. She doesn't have many secrets. That's true. Like, That's literally, true. the the secret is she can read, and she's and she was an apothecary. It's well, called apothecary diaries. Like, there is no secret. <laughs> I guess we should we should probably set the stage of what it is. Basically, the story is set in Imperial China. Uh, well, the no, fake Imperial uh, China. Fictional. Well, that was funny. So the first thing, I've never seen an anime, like, in the very beginning, this is a work of fiction. Yeah. It's not, you know... No that, characters or... or yeah, yeah. kind of, like, standard or whatever. And I was like, oh, that's odd. Um, but yeah, basically, it's set a fictional world that uh, is quite like Imperial China uh, during the Tang Dynasty. Um, which was also interesting, because I remember when, I, when we were started watching it, all the names, I was like, these... These seem like Chinese names. Yeah. Like, is this because you know generally most uh, Japanese anime is set in Japan. Yeah. Uh, and so um, it's it's really interesting. But basically, it's about this young uh, country girl who is an apothecary mm -hmm. uh, who gets kidnapped in the very beginning and sold into essentially servitude for the palace. Yeah. Uh, and she's trying to keep her head down, but then of course like. Um, there ends up being some sort of situation and uh, her skills come into play and then she is in this sort of adventure where she plays the apo this sort of um, apothecary for the uh, for the empire. Yeah, yeah, and, and one of the, the main, the like, one of the main palace guys that, that we know there's more to him, but, you know, right. but they haven't revealed it at this point in, in but where he's we like, are at it. He's the main guy. Yeah, yeah um, but, but he, he, like, kind of, does sort of like you know detective work for the palace you know he's he's the guy yeah. that like he does all the political stuff but also figures out the mysteries that are going on and 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 so he's the one that sort of discovers like wait I know, I know who who uh, who sent the letter to figure things out in the first one. That like you know, I don't. I feel like we're not explaining this well because we're like we're like jumping to things that don't make any yeah, sense contextually. And, yeah, and I don't know why I'm trying because I'm terrible at explaining I, things. I, I know. I keep on pointing that out. I feel bad for it, but I'm like, I think you're just making these more confusing. Yeah, for the audience I, here. I'm, I'm making it worse. It's really hot right it now is. in this apartment, so we're probably delusional. I'll say this, okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you described it well earlier, though. It, it is basically about a young woman who, her, in in most anime, someone has some special power, yeah. right? Like they're like, uh, you know, they have like some kind of chi or some kind of energy, yeah. or they can, you know, snap and there's explosions. <laughs> uh, her power is being well educated and smart yeah. in a world where most people lack education, unless they're royalty. Yeah. Um, also, there's a, a interesting twist where um, she was she grew up uh, basically at a brothel in the red light district. So she knows certain things about 
uh, courtesans, yeah. courtesans, uh, you know, um, uh, pay, I don't know, lady, I don't know, I mean. Ladies of the night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but also, she grew up with, um, with uh, her father as an apothecary, so she kind of has these two sets of knowledge. Yeah, well, and she's also hilarious because she's obsessed with poisons yeah. to the point where, where she's become immune to a lot of them, but she also, like, experimented on herself with poisons yeah. throughout her, like, throughout her, her younger days. And so, like, she she's so knowledgeable about poisons. Yeah. And every time they get into that, it's so hilarious because she also loves them. And she's like, oh, the, the tingle of that I poison on my tongue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's true. And it's really funny because um, it's almost like it reminded me of, like, Magellan from One Piece, you know, with, like, the poison fruit. Like, uh, ah. But what I love is, um, you know, in true anime form, it, it's... This is not supernatural at all. Yeah. This is very, like, slice of life. But um, she's got this one arm that's all messed up from yeah. her experimenting on herself so in a way like with the imagery with like the open uh it almost it almost looks like she's got some like like special power anime arm thing going on but it's just her being it's, a it's, freak yeah. and testing herself it's, just, it's she's got bandages on to, yeah. to cover up all the bruising and stuff yeah like it reminded me sort of like when um sasuke and naruto had like the 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 thing that Orochimaru did to him. Well, it's funny though because it also worked to her benefit because when she got put into the the house with the with the court uh, with the uh, uh, with the ladies in waiting. in waiting, they they saw it and they're like, she must have been abused by her family and her, like before she came here. So I realized we did a really bad job of explaining the show. Now that I think about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's start again. Yeah. Give, give, um, give the basic rundown. Yeah. You do it. Yeah. I will not. I will not speak. Okay. <laughs> Because I will not be helpful. Um, so, we've already established this girl. So this girl who has apothecary skills and knows about courtesans, she gets abducted and sold, and now she works at the rear palace. Now, the rear palace is where the concubines of the emperor live. Yeah. And there's four concubines, and these are like, I don't know, girlfriend, wives? I don't even yeah. know what you'd call con concubines appropriately for YouTube. But um the main all... character Mao Mao isn't really like when when she gets there, she's not really associated with, with that side of things. She is like basic house skills, yeah. like like laundry and stuff. Yeah, and then and basically and then the, through foibles of the first episode they find out she has apothecary skills and she becomes very essential to how the rear palace sort of runs. And I think the main aspect of the show that's really interesting is I think there's a mix of political intrigue because um, it's it's within the palace, the concubines, there's always like power struggles, there's the emperor involved, it's very dangerous mm -hmm. if you got on the wrong side of certain people. So there's that kind of political thriller thing, but also because she is a woman of science um, and a lot of people don't really understand science, so they think a lot of stuff is like, um, you know, curses or demons and stuff. Um, every episode's basically like a detective story, yeah. Where she has to sort of figure out what's going on, well, and, and um, in, in the in the world where everyone thinks like, uh, it's like a witch. It's also great because it's it's sort of like you know like a Columbo kind of thing where she's yeah. always underestimated. You know, she she like she dresses how they make her dress, but sometimes she just dresses in her sort of normal garb and and she doesn't get taken as seriously and and she she puts on like like freckles and makeup to to make herself look less attractive mm -hmm. and and so. So, like, she's always being underestimated, and people don't understand, like, how skilled and how knowledgeable she is. And then because of all the political stuff going on in the, in, in the, the palace, like, they, you know, they might suspect her of something, but then she ends up, like, proving herself and not necessarily befriending them, but, like, you know making them show, see that they can trust her, and the higher-ups are all like, oh, yeah, she's, like, amazing. So... <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I get so excited. There was a lot that just happened yeah, right there. It's, it's so good. I was so like, uh -huh, I was so uh -huh, looking forward to getting uh -huh. started to, to watching this, and I, I knew very little. And then we watched it, and it was so enjoyable. And yeah. the, and the stories, the storytelling is yeah. so beautiful. The animation is beautiful. Like, it, it is. The animation is gorgeous. Like, yeah, but the but the storytelling, the way that each episode is written, yeah. it's so different from so many of the other anime that we watch. Yeah. And it's just done in such a, a magnificent way and such a, like, a charming way. Well, it's crazy. So the third episode was so amazing and so beautiful. And I remember we watched the first two were really good. And the third one was so great. I said, 
was this written by a woman? Because it was so, like, uh, uh, emotionally, what's the word, like, um, uh, satisfying yeah. that I was like, I was like, I don't think a man could have written this story. Yeah. And, and then of course, then we looked up, it's like, oh yeah, it is written yeah, by a female. I think her name is a Natsu Hyuga. Nice. Yeah. Hyu uh, yeah. Of the Hugas? Of the Hugas class. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Naruto's family, um, <laughs> uh, or, you know, in-laws. In -laws. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, um, it's a great show. Oh, the other thing we need to bring, we kind of, you kind of gleamed on it, but, um, so the guy who's sort of in charge of the rear palace, his name is, uh, Jinchi. Jinchi yeah. And he is a, the royal eunuch now. Or, or at least it's a, like, no, he has never said that, but everyone thinks, or thinks he is. He seems like that's all she's ever been introduced to him as. Okay, so the way it works is for a man to actually hold a position in the rear palace, he has to be a eunuch. Yeah. Because it protects the royal bloodline, yeah. basically. And this is something that did happen in Imperial China um, and other other cultures. Uh, but anyway, so, um, but he's this gorgeous guy with like this like long purple hair and every woman is like smitten by him and they like fall. It's like basically Basically, like, you know, like, every anime when, like, there's, like, a hot girl and, like, Roshi or, or, or Jirai or some old man, like, sprays blood yeah. out of their nose? Well, this is, like, the opposite. It's, like, every girl, like, falls every, yeah, over herself. They, they get hard eyes and, yeah, and, and like, like, and ah. the little, like, glittering around them. Yeah, and, and his whole thing is, like, he, he wants to keep an eye on, on Mau Mau, our main yeah. character, and, and so, like, he's, like... Well, I know how, how to make sure that, that I can trust her. I'll just have to seduce okay. her. And, and, and never of course, works. it never works on her. She's, like, totally un unimpressed. Yeah, she's kind of schemed out by it. Yeah. And, but he, but it's the greatest thing, because they do that anime thing where he turns, and he, like, sparkles at her. And, and it's like, a soft <laughs> light, yeah. And then he's, like, so bummed out that, like, yeah. No, their relationship's really fun. And I also love, one of the other really cute things I love is they have that Moe thing where, like, once in a while, like, she'll... To show some kind of emotional response from her, they'll animate her like a cat. Yes. Kind of. Like, they'll give her, like, cat ears and a tail. She'll be like, eee, or something like that. And it's, like, so cute. Yeah. And I just love it. I think it's so fun. But it's a, it's just, it's such a great anime because the the um, the detective story stuff is really well done. Yeah. It's really well thought out. The, the storytelling, like I said, is just beautifully played out. And then you've got this sort of, like... Will they, won't they with, with her and Jinchi, which is so tangential to it. It's like, it's not, like, it's not at it's all not, the main thing. It's yeah. not at all. But, but at the same time, like it's, it's there happening in the background. He's definitely like at this point crushing on her yeah. and like, and she just doesn't get it at all. And, well, and I also think the main thing really is her survival. Cause at yeah. the end of the day, like she could make any, even if, even if she doesn't make a mistake, even if she does the right thing, if that goes against like, um, you know, just the way the Imperium wants, they could behead her. Yeah. They could kill her. So her life is constantly in danger. Um, and so, and, and it's it's just really, and also they deal with very, though it is light in some places and fun, it deals with a lot of adult subjects yeah. because at the end of the day, you know, courtesans, the, there's sex workers, there's like, there's murder, there's a lot of like stuff. So it's like a really, it's a very layered, interesting show. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, uh, we're like we said, we're only halfway through through the first season, yeah. uh, and season two is already uh, on on the books for like twenty twenty five. I, I think. Um, but but yeah, I I can't recommend it enough. I think it's fantastic. It's we, great. We've got a few more anime that we're that we're looking forward to trying, but yeah. like but this one like. I, I, I feel like by the end of the weekend, we'll be done with it. <laughs> I think so, too. Well, especially because, like, it's such a nice palate cleanser because we started My Hero, the new season of My Hero. We've been watching Kaiju, number eight. We love all these shows, but, like, uh, you know, Mashal we finished up, but it's, like, this is, like, so different. And it's not an isekai, either, like not we said. All, yeah. So it's nice to have something that just feels uh, fundamentally different, but also, like, equal and better in some ways because it's, like... It does what it's doing so well. It's such I, also, a high level. I I one of the things I love in it too is like, you know, with her knowledge, like again, in, in all the ones where it's an isekai, it's like someone has a knowledge of like what allergies are. Right. And, and and so then they have to like think, Oh, they're not gonna understand what that is, how do I explain it? Well, in this case, nobody knows what allergies are, but she knows that some people can't eat certain foods yeah. or like, you know, and so so she explains things in a in a proper way of how, how they would be explained. And it's like, no, like some people just can't can't touch this or can't eat this or can't like yeah well yeah. you're right because i mean isekai generally speaking it's like they just have normal person like 
uh, uh, understanding of the world, which gives them like powers mm -hmm. and also additional powers. In this th this show, I feel like if like you know uh, like especially like if a younger girl to watch it, it's a little more like the Scully effect, right? Yeah. Like she like Mao Mao is powerful because she's smart. Yeah. She you know she has this she has this like funny working relationship with the doctor she calls the quack doctor because mm, yeah. he's a bad doctor. Like she's the only capable person like in the kingdom that yeah, knows yeah, actual how like and... poisons and yeah. medicines work. Uh, and it's really just because she's smart. Yeah. And because she like and, and, and she is educated and like she's trained and, and I love that 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 like anytime I think that's why people like Star Trek. Anytime you have a show where it's like knowledge is power that like, you know, it's not like I can punch hard. That means I'm the hero. It's like I know things. Yeah. I'm smart. I can figure things out. Well, that is much more I think um I think it's in a way it's like much more powerful for a viewer. Well, and it's great because you know she was she was trained by by her father for the apothecary stuff, but also to figure things out. So there's yeah. this one episode that her father was in, and it reminded me of an episode of Psych, yeah. where where Sean was like you know where his where his dad would yeah. make him like figure things out, and his dad already figured it, figured it all out. Yeah, yeah. But but he would like be like you know lead him to the right conclusion, but but would be like you know well did you notice like. How, like, did you notice the guy with the hat, or did you notice this yeah. and that? And, and it's a, shot, like, a, a deduction exercise. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, and that like there was an episode of this that that played that played on that kind of thing, mm. and I was just like, oh man, this is this is that kind of thing that I love, and I love you know, like you said, like we were talking about, you know, she's so knowledgeable of the apothecary stuff, but but he taught her more than that. He taught her beyond just the general stuff about the poisons or the or the medicines and stuff it was it was the the deducing what's gone on yeah like, it's yeah. just really cool it's great well uh it's on crunchyroll um the first season's out yeah and we'll watch the whole thing and do a full season review when we get to it yeah. hopefully it'll make a little more sense maybe when we're uh describing not things. if i'm trying to maybe describe just it. in like a like a like a like an elevator pitch of maybe show. maybe we'll need to write it out because you know I'm, <laughs> I, I, I we'll get cue cards yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that would be great. Hey, you know, it worked for Marlon Brando. That guy, <laughs> had, that guy's considered like the best actor who ever lived. So True. there you go. All right. Uh, I don't know. Do you want to say anything else? Uh, watch Apothecary Diaries. Do it.